Hi, I'm Mike and I'm here with my 2021 Norco Torrent. Today I'm going to talk about my first impressions with the bike. First I'll talk about the specs of the bike and then what it's like out on the trail and finally why I chose this bike over some of its competitors. Norco offers four models in the Torrent, two steel frames and two aluminium frames as well as a frame only. All bikes come with a 64 degree head angle and a 76 degree seat tube angle and on my size large I have a 480mm reach and a 425mm rear centre length. Norco does have different rear centre lengths for different sizes. The steel frames have external routing except for the dropper post and the aluminium frames have all internal routing. The aluminium frames also have a small spot to have some bolt-on tool storage. There's space out the back for, to run 2.6 inch tyres if that's your thing. I opted for the top of the line S1 model which is a steel frame and comes with a RockShox Lyric Ultimate RC2 fork. And that's with 150mm travel. The cranks are a Praxis Cadet 30 tooth 175mm length crank. The drivetrain is a Shimano XT derailleur with a SLX shifter. It would have been nice to see full XT kit though. For wheels and tyres we have the Stans Flow S1 in 29 inch and we have a Maxxis Asagai 2.5 inch on the front and a Maxxis Dissector 2.4 inch on the rear. And being stands, obviously it comes all tubeless ready. For brakes, we have the Shimano BR-M520 with metallic pads and those are four piston brakes, front and rear. And that's paired with 203mm rotor on the front and a 180mm rotor out the back. The bar and stem are house brand, but they come at good dimensions with a 50mm stem and a 800mm wide riser bar. I really like the grips that it comes with, it's a DMR death grip, it's nice that you don't have to upgrade the grips straight away. The saddle is a Physic Alpaca Terra, and that's on top of the X-Fusion Manic dropper post, which on my size large is 170mm. On the medium it's 150mm, and on the small it's a 125mm travel. The Torrent doesn't come with any pedals, so you have to get those yourself, and for me I went with the Race Pace Chester pedal, which is my favourite composite flat pedal. This all comes into a build which is around 15 kilos for this steel frame model. As I mentioned, this is the top of the line model, so there's definitely nothing that needs to be immediately changed, but there's definitely some upgrades you could make for your personal preference. So now I'm going to take you through the upgrades I'm planning on making to this bike. The first upgrade I'd make to any hardtail is definitely a tyre insert in the rear and potentially in the front. I'm going to go with the Tannis tubeless insert. I might actually make a video about this in the near future, so keep your eyes peeled. As I mentioned earlier, it comes with an SLX shifter. Upgrading to an XT shifter will give you better materials and a nicer shifting feel. So that's probably what I'm going to do. The dropper lever that comes with the X-Shoes and Manic is a bit slippery straight out of the box and it definitely looks a bit plain. Upgrading to a Wolf Tooth or PNW lever would definitely feel a lot nicer on the hand. The chain safe protector has already started to lift up on my frame, so definitely consider doing some frame protection to the areas where you think you'll need it. Another upgrade I like to do is changing my front axle to a quick release axle. It's definitely nice to have the option to take the front wheel off when you need to. I've taken this bike for a couple of rides now, so I'm going to talk you through what it's like out on the trail. So the first thing you should know before I go into the trail impressions is that I actually sold my 160mm enduro bike to buy this bike. The reason I sold my enduro bike was the trails I ride in Sydney here are just a little bit too tame for an enduro bike. So buying this bike, I was definitely looking for something that's going to challenge me on the trail, but also has to be able to handle all the trails that I ride on a regular basis. There's not a whole lot of elevation change here in Sydney, so the trails here are normally blue or black, but there's nothing really too double black or too difficult, so the bike definitely doesn't have to be able to handle any downhill tracks or anything like that. In terms of setup for this bike, it's pretty straightforward. Put some pedals on, just set the fork up as per recommended settings. I left my rebound only a couple clicks off fully opened, and I only have one click of low speed compression and one click of high speed compression. After my first ride, I also added a third bottom loss token, which has helped the fork ramp up in the top end of the travel. So jumping on the bike, the first thing you notice is that it is big. It has a longer wheelbase than my enduro bike, and with that 64 degree head tube angle, you definitely know what this bike's designed for. With the 29 inch wheels and the 76 degree seat tube angle, it definitely makes for a decent climber as well. The combination of the Lyric fork up front with the 2.5 inch Asagai means that you have a lot of confidence going anywhere on the trail. And the lack of rear suspension keeps you on your toes and makes sure you make good line choices. I thought that the steel frame might make the bike feel really heavy considering this bike weighs as much as my 160mm enduro bike, which was aluminium. But the fixed rear end makes it easy to pump through rollers, bunny hop over things and also unweight over the rough stuff. This bike really just wants to plough through things but also just loves being up in the air. 
Once you get this bike up to speed, you really don't notice the weight anymore. Once you get all that weight moving, you've got the four piston M520 brakes to stop you, and I find they do a pretty good job of doing that. They also have reach adjustment using a small Allen key, which is a nice feature to have. I recently took this bike to a new bike park that's opened up here in Sydney, and honestly it feels like my old 26 inch dirt jumper which I used to have. The bike feels like a dirt jumper but just with 29 inch tyres and a little bit more weight. Talking about the 29 inch tyres, my old enduro bike was 27.5 inch, so this is the first bike I've had with 29 inch tyres. The last time I rode 29 inch tyres was on the old Norco Optic, which at the time was basically an XC bike and I found it cornered really bad, but this bike doesn't seem to have that problem because of its low bottom bracket, it really corners well. So there are a couple things I don't like about this bike and I'll get into that now. The only terrain that this bike really doesn't seem to like is rock gardens. You really have to be careful with your line choice and you can't just huck things to flat, you really have to be careful about where you go and really try and catch transition. But it is part of the charm of hardtails. Clearing a section on a hardtail is so much more rewarding than clearing it on a full suspension bike. You definitely have to work a bit harder, but it's so much more rewarding. One other little quirk I found with a hardtail, which is something I didn't realise before buying it, is when you're riding on flat or uphill, when you come to a set of small bumps which are consistent, you tend to start bouncing on the seat because there's no rear suspension to compensate for those small bumps. It's not a big deal, you just have to keep an eye out on where you're going. So why did I choose this bike over some of the other bikes which are out there? I'll get into that now. So this bike definitely isn't cheap at $4,200 Australian. Uh, its closest competitor is probably the Kona ESD, which has a 63 degree head tube angle. The reason I went with the Torrent over the ESD was primarily because I got a really good deal on it. I was able to get the bike for 20% off during a sale, which brought the price down to $3,400, which is pretty similar to the price of the S2. One thing I look for when buying a hardtail is really good suspension, because you've only got one set of it, so it needs to be good. So I was looking at top of the line models such as the Norco Torrent, as well as the Kona ESD, I prefer the Torrent over the ESD because it's not quite as aggressive and as this bike has to be able to do everything, it needs to be able to go down as well as climb and it needs to be able to handle everything from green tracks right up to double black diamonds. Whereas the Kona ESD seems to be a bit more focused on just descending. I also definitely considered a few aluminium frames such as the Nuke Proof Scout, the Marin San Quentin and the Merida Big Trail. There's a lot of talk out there about if steel is real and honestly I don't really know if it is. But getting a hardtail, I definitely would rather have steel and it not really do anything than not have it at all. The main advantage of going aluminium over steel is that they're a bit lighter, so they feel a bit zippier on the trail. And the advantage of steel is that they're a bit more forgiving on bumps and are better for descending. As my riding styles tend to lean a bit more to descending, that's why I went with the steel frame. As I was replacing my enduro bike, I definitely would rather have the steel to give me a bit more confidence when I was descending. These hardtails can range from about 130mm travel up to about 160mm and looking around on the hardtail community it seems like 130 to 150mm seems to be the sweet spot in terms of travel and the Norco having 150mm travel certainly fit the bill. So to summarise, do I regret selling my enduro bike? Absolutely not. By getting this bike it's made all my old trails new again and has given me new challenges. If you don't have a lot of space for bikes and you don't ride a lot of downhill, I think that this bike or a hardtail could definitely be a quiver killer you know, pulling something out of your quiver. Uh -huh. And it being a quiver killer means you only need one bike. So this could definitely be your only bike. So right now I don't have any full suspension bikes and I definitely don't consider getting any. The Norco does everything I need it to. You should definitely consider a hardtail because you're definitely gonna get a lot more bang for your buck because you're not paying for rear suspension and all the work that goes into that. There's also a lot less maintenance on a hardtail. Hardtails are great because they also build your core riding skills such as bunny hopping and manualing. As I mentioned earlier, I'll probably do some of the upgrades, but other than that, you really don't have to touch a bike other than for regular maintenance on your drivetrain and your forks. So let me know what you ride. If you need a hand choosing a hardtail, definitely comment down below and I'll help out where I can. I'm Mike on a bike and thanks for watching.